In this video I'm going to talk about box objects and how to use them in the new Interior CAD 2021 cabinet object. Now this is not a video about the clothes rail, although I'm going to start with it because it shows the new capabilities of the box object um, quite dramatically. In earlier versions we had to use a marionette and if we wanted to insert something into any of the interior CAD boxes. There's only one here, but you could have any number of boxes. And if you wanted that object to stretch with the box width or height or depth or all of these dimensions, you had to use a marionette because the marionette is a parametric object and we, we can uh, sort of remote control um, all the parameters of the marionette within interior CAD. We can still do that. You can see, if we go to the settings button there, and I have the box width and the box height and the box depth. And I can set this to be controlled by the exterior or interior dimensions of the interior cat cabinet. So I've placed that, that clothes rail there. And if I now want to change the depth or the width or the height, that clothes rail knows what to do and it sort of stretches with the cabinet. Um, it's, I've, I've placed it as a standalone object here because you can see you can choose between different um, fittings there and a different rail um, geometry and you can place coat hangers and garments etc and uh, you don't actually have to do this via a marionette anymore um, okay to be fair for the for the garments and the uh, and the coat hangers you still do but if you just want a clothes rail or any other object that will stretch with the dimensions of the cabinet box, you can now do this in a dramatically easier way than what was possible before. And I'm just going to go through the steps that are involved to uh, create such an object. Now, since we're going to reuse the, the fittings for the uh, clothes rail, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by ungrouping this object, this marionette. I turned off the warning and you normally get a warning when you uh, try to ungroup a high level object. I'm going to get rid of my that, that one fitting so I'm only left with the left fitting and the the rail. Now you can see the rail is an extrude that's exactly what we want and this is um, it's an, an auto hybrid which I'm going to ungroup and now I'm left with a generic solid that's all we need. Um, in the interior CAD box, I've still got the, the marionette, but I'm going to replace the marionette with these two objects in a minute. But before I do, I need to uh, change this, make this a, a symbol and make this a symbol as well. And then we'll, we'll see how that affects the placement of the objects. Now let's go to the front view and I'll flip this left because remember that in Vectorworks, all the symbols have an insertion point and for vector works all symbols are trees or poles or something that's placed on the ground plane now let's just pretend for a minute that these are trees right now if this is a tree then this is basically where it where it uh, comes out of the ground and everything below that plane is the other roots and everything above that plane is the trunk so let's create a symbol now from this from this guy and I'm going to go to modify and then create symbol. I'm going to choose next mouse click. I'm going to call this as my fitting. And I'm going to have this converted to a group because I want to add some drillings as well to it. And don't have any 2D objects in there. I can leave that instance in place, but that's not necessary for this to function. Um, I'll just leave this as it is. And um, Okay, that's already used. No, let's call it fitting two then. Obviously it has to be unique, unique that name. So I'm going to place the insertion point at the midpoint between the left and right. Well, it seems to want to use a different point there. I'm just going to go with that point for now. I'm going to change that in a minute. So that's my one, my one symbol. And that's the second symbol. I'm just going to shorten this a little bit, just for convenience. It doesn't really matter. Oops, it doesn't really matter um, what size this is. It's just easier to handle. 
and again kind of turn this into a symbol that's my rail and the next mouse click that's actually drawn with vector work so I'm getting my my arc center there which is really convenient so that's my fitting right okay so that's these are my two objects now that's all I need to do really let's go to the the box pane of the cabinet the objects pane um, first of first of all I'm going to delete the marionette and I'm going to add the fitting now call it fitting call that what you like and here's my fitting now remember I explained about the tree now the tree is just to, so it's easier to remember how to um, orient the geometry inside the symbol container now if that's a tree and, and, and then that that custom part is my is my ground now I don't want this fitting to be on the ground as it were I want it to be on the left here so I need to think about my cabinet being rotated 90 degrees so that's my ground plane obviously now if I choose left that fitting will be placed on the left and since this has been set to the center it's in the center I want to set this to top so this, the fitting is in the cent in the center here between the front and the back but at the top so that's where it's going to be okay now I can give this an offset but this is a fitting that will well, that will normally be screwed underneath um, a movable shelf so that would be in that corner but I could easily give that an offset from the top from say uh, 200 millimeters if I wanted to no problem okay now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, mirror that fitting on the opposite surface so I have it here now so that's my two fittings now I haven't added any drillings there yet but I'm going to do that in the next step next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add the rail so let's click add there call that a rail and sorry oops nearly that's the that's the guy I need okay so this is my rail same thing um, place it on the left there it is place it at the top there it is and now give it a top offset of 200 right okay now let's just choose to resize that object and in the settings set it to box width so now the close rail is going to go all the way across there okay it doesn't look quite right we're going to have a look at why that is in a minute but let's just have this built and see what it looks like so there we go but the first thing you notice is this is dramatically faster than it was before and that's because it's just a simple extrude so if I set this to 500 bam there you have it it's instant that's because it doesn't need to recompile the code internally of the marionette okay now let's go to wireframe and right view and see why this isn't right well I think I know why it is I think it's because I've set the insertion point to the to the top there instead of the bottom now that's when you go to the when you go to the, the the objects pane and you look at your fitting you see that this is using the object bounds instead of the insertion point now if I change this to insertion point and I do the same for the for the rail that should rectify it there you go so that's all right now okay so you can use the symbol insertion point and you can use the symbol geometry whichever you can use best for the for the case that you that you're working on really for the situation now there's two things left to do for us uh, one is that obviously the rail is too long still for um, for the for the space left by the fitting now let's just measure the thickness of the fitting there so that's six millimeters so that's six millimeters either side so that's 12 let's give it another two make it 14 millimeters so what we need to do is we need to shorten that rail by 14 millimeters and since you shorten it on the left and on the right separately it gets a value of seven either side so now it's short by 
seven millimeters so there's a little bit of wiggle room there and that's perfect now as I said there's a few things still left for us to do so if if you're just a designer if you just design your cabinets and you need this for rendering purposes or for technical drawings you you're done basically but you can do more so if you want to have that information in the cutting list and also you might want to have the drillings dimensioned on the side in the part layout later on this is the part layout tool then you can have that as well and you you just add the drillings to the fitting and you add the interior cut sales info to both the, the fitting and the rail and then that'll come up in in the the cutting list so let's do that next so this is my document and I'm just gonna let's just find that rail there let's actually start with the fitting go to edit 3d component and what we're going to do is we're going to just place some some center punches underneath that fitting so it's going to go back to OpenGL it's easier to do that in OpenGL I'm going to find the center punch tool and I'm just going to place it there to start with and actually I'm going to hold my shift key pressed when I place it because that will reverse it so it doesn't go into the object but um, protrude out from it and I'm going to go to the uh, top plan view and hopefully that's going to give me the center if this was a, a vector works drawn object I would get the center because it would remember it but it's imported as a generic solid so that's sometimes hard to grab the centers but you could still do that using the smart cursor um, so so that's my my center punches now these will be these will be placed automatically in the sides of the cabinet but before they do and before I can add the cutting list info I need to do a group so I group these two and then there's a command there under interior CAD and under fittings and it's called assign fitting type and there's two types of fittings there there's a handle and user defined and in this case I want user defined so that's just my my confirmation message there okay now that, that's nearly all but um, one let one thing left to do is to add the cutting list info so let's uh, go in, in inside the group and this is my geometry that's inside the group and I'm going to go to the data tab and attach a record and that record is interior cut sales info so this is my description let's call this fitting one two three supplier is stock order number is one two three four and the price is let's say one whatever and that's it really and now this will this will come up in in my cutting list and it'll be uh, used in the costing and um, I'll have my order number for creating the order later on and I'll do the same for the clothes rail that extrude and since that doesn't have a fitting associated with it I can just attach the record and I call this rail supplier stock is three four five six and that's going to be two whatever okay so that's it let's just regenerate the cabinet um, there's a an easy way to do that just turn off the 3d details and turn them on again and that will recreate your cabinet and now what you will see in the in the wireframe is that there are center punches and you, you if you look closely you see that they're now black they're not not red any longer and that's that's because they're connected to the custom parts on the side so if I now get rid of these guys so if I if I now have the part layout created for this cabinet let's just do that quickly you see that I am getting those center punches and I can have them automatically dimensioned so that's really handy and that really works for every anything that you might want to place on the sides in the cabinet in the box anything that you do with the cabinet I mean you could just put a hole inside and that will be dimensioned that's the part layout but that's for a different movie um, this is just for the box objects so that's nearly it uh, there's just one thing left to show you guys and that's the that's the uh, export to uh, cutting list so let's just do that 
and here's the cutting list as a CSV and there you go that's the uh, that's the rail with the 446 millimeter length and the two fittings one two three I call them and obviously you can use that in your costing etc etc so um, that's it for now thanks for watching see you next time